Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is part one of today's How to Base. And today I will show you how to make this base and turn it into this base. This will be part one, where I pretty much only go over exactly what steps and what knobs, what parameters I use to make the sound exactly with zero explanation and no dilly dallying of the sort. Part two is where actually you'll get to see me make it from scratch. So that's uh, what part two is for, if you would like to see that. The patch for this will be available in the description for download. And if you're wondering why I have my hair down, it's because in a couple hours, I'm going to go play a metal show. And metal shows, being in the informal affairs that they are, sort of a, a dress down sort of event. So I need, I'm need i keeping my hair down all day so that when I don't, when I take out of my hair tie, oh, I'm not going to wear a hair tie because so if because when I do take out of the hair tie, it's usually stuck in some weird position. It looks weird. So I'm 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 existing I'm existing in the metal state today. So that's what's up. So let's do this. This first part is a two saw Reese made using Unison. Uh, it's distorted and it has a bandpass uh, modulation. Mod, mod bandpass modulation. Um, the uh, do do the I'm automating the frequency and the width. And I've engaged keyboard tracking. I've also turned harmonic protection up a little bit, not all the way, but a little bit. The unison is set as such, and it's kind of just there. It can set the taste, whatever. The mo more unison, more speed, that kind of thing, in terms of the wob. I've turned on uh, log distortion to you know, distort it, and then compress it. That's pretty much what's up with this sound. Uh, the automation is, again, on the frequency and width, as you can see here. I've automated it as such, and it was largely random to choose what position this is. And this is the MIDI that I choose to use. Not really anything complicated. So then I record it into Edison. Like that, like so. I have it here. And then I click and drag this thingy into a new hammer, which is this guy. This is the first resample step. As you see here, I have automated width and offset of the phaser. I've turned speed off, keyboard tracking off, it's set to octave, and mixes on full. It's also the classic shape, it's very basic. The unison is also engaged a very, a very low amount. Um, I have engaged distortion, and also a similarly low amount, and compression, and a whole bunch. This is a whole bunch of compression. Uh, the advanced tab is set to have high precision, perfect, and no denoise on. Also smooth mod, although that probably shouldn't have been on, but it's on now, so I'm keeping it that way. Um, Automation does as such, and in the MIDI, I've actually I've I've done two whole separate ones. This is so that the Unison doesn't will actually re, it will retrigger on the second half when it loops around, as opposed to if I had just had one whole note where it would play it twice, but then the Unison would be at that position and continue to go on for the second time around, which would create an entirely different sound. Didn't want, didn't want to do that this particular time. And then I recorded this into Unison, into Unison, into Edison, like so. Click the dragged and then put it into a third. Now, here's where I demonstrated the actual main point of this out of base, which was to utilize the uh, the formant uh, mutation window here. I go into super depth about what this is and what it does in part two, in this case you're familiar, unfamiliar with that. Um, I've engaged unison slightly, and I have turned the sharpness uh, down a whole bunch. I turned the, the formant mix on, but the formant uh, amount is stable. Pretty much everything else is normal. Um, I have elected to make the format shape this. That's what's happening. And then I have distorted it a little bit and then compressed it a little bit. And then the advanced tab is similarly high precision and perfect in terms of precision. High precision and perfect precision. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's not just confusing at all. Um, yeah, so as, as far as we sampling goes, this one was pretty straightforward and simple. Um, the underlying concept of using the phaser as, as a, uh, a filter, basically, in the second step, is totally the, the result of my interaction with Odeka. They were the ones that came up with this idea, and now I'm using it. So yeah, just give them the credit where credit's due. Um, like I said... Uh, part two contains me making this base from scratch, which shows you the very basics and the, the theory behind everything that I do, and also the, as much explanation as, as necessary for, you know, doing what I did. 
Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. If I mean, if I did miss anything, it's going to be in part two. So if you uh, have any questions about any of this, uh, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. And go on over to part two, where I learn y'all learn you up a base. <laughs>